Welcome to Corona Stories from Observing the Process. I'm your host, Alex Greenberg. And before we start, I'm hoping you can help me out by supporting the show. You can rate and review it on iTunes, Stitcher, or wherever you listen. You can share it with your friends, you can blog about it, or discuss it on your own podcast. If you're watching on YouTube, you can subscribe to my channel and like this video or you can support it directly. You can do this by going to the shop on my website. I'll leave a link in the description. Thank you for supporting the show. Listeners like you make it possible. If you are looking for information on how to protect yourself and stay safe from COVID-19, please get information from the CDC or the World Health Organization. Today on the show, I had Fulden Dinelli. Fulden is an industrial designer who was based in Shanghai, but is from Turkey. Please welcome... Fulden Dinelli. In the land of China, people hardly got nothing at all. No possessions? And in China, they never go to church. No religion, too? I do magic. Well, it's easy if you try, Nick. Hello? Hello. Hey, Fulden, how are you? <laughs> I'm trying to be fine. <laughs> I feel you. It's uh, Everyone's dealing with this right now. So as we start, could you please introduce yourself? Maybe um, where you're based, what you do for work, that kind of stuff. Yeah, sure. Uh, I'm Fulden. I am actually based in Shanghai, but currently in Turkey in a city called Antalya. Um, I'm a designer who just founded her own company. So I am working from home right now. Mm. Um, when did you first hear about the coronavirus? Um, the first time I heard it was the middle of um, January. Mm. And I was already here in Turkey because I came here for the New Year's, uh, the holiday. And then because I just founded my company, I was a bit, you know, more flexible with my time and I wanted to stay longer. Mm. So I would have planned to be here during the whole January. Right. And mid-January, this started to happen. And um, yeah, so I delayed my return. Um, and the virus came here anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. When you, when you first heard about uh, COVID-19, what were your first impressions? Like for me, it was, um, I was actually on WeChat and I just saw a bunch of memes, um, related to Flora Yeah, and Flora is uh, a person who was stuck in Wuhan. So I'm curious what, um, I was, uh, I was really confused when I saw that and it made sense if, after a while, but what were your first impressions when you heard about it? Like, did you take it seriously? That kind of stuff. Um, I think I took it seriously from the very beginning. Mm. I don't exactly remember my first reactions, but I was quite worried about um, what's going to happen. I know people in China and I have my home there, like how this gonna will affect me. So uh, there were so many questions in my mind. Um, so I was, I think like very closely watching uh, all what's happening. And I was trying to find all the information from all over the internet. Um, yeah, trying to follow like very closely. So I took it very serious from the beginning. And mm. um, yeah. So speaking of, you know, trying to get information, um, the media plays yeah. a huge role in this whole situation. So yeah, I'm, I'm curious to sure. think about your thoughts on the media in general, how they've been um, providing information, the, the way that it's like constantly bombarding us. Um, I think mental health plays a big role in this as well, because a lot of people are suffering just because um, it's a lot of information to take in. So I'm just curious your thoughts on, yeah. for example, Turkish media is something we will have no idea how it was portrayed to to, to you guys if <laughs> yeah. you're not a native Turkish speaker. Yeah, um, I think the information about other countries that comes to Turkey, it's pretty fine. It's more like um, they can censor the information that happens in Turkey. Mm. <laughs> but the outside world is like, because it's not of like 
lot of our business kind of thing. So they kind of take it like in, and especially this type of um, like a, a virus uh, that will affect everyone eventually. And I think it was nice also that, you know, because we were living in Shanghai, we know how to get information there. So you go read some articles or like what people sharing on WeChat. Hmm. Um, so I had internet, I had Turkish media and I had WeChat um, and stuff. So it was, I think, good amount of information and like variation of sources. Hmm. Uh, something that I'm always uh, yeah. curious about is um, the way, or for this specifically, this situation, the way different cultures will handle this pandemic. For mm -hmm. me, I'm able yeah. to compare America to China because I've lived in China for five years. I have somewhat of an understanding of the culture and I'm American. Mm -hmm. So my thoughts are in China, they have a situation where the people are quite obedient and they're going to take things seriously. They're going to mm -hmm. follow instructions. So that's my impression of mm -hmm. what's going on in China. For America, I've seen yeah. a lot of video of people not taking it seriously, not social distancing, not taking you know yeah. precautions as to what the CDC and the World Health Organization yeah. advise. So maybe you could give some insight into Turkish culture and how you guys are handling the situation. Yeah. Um, like you said, I can also compare China versus Turkey in a way, um, like how it happened in China, like it's, I mean, the culture is already quite obedient in a way, but this helps in some situations pretty well. Like if there is like a proper, um, regulation needs to go, um, like quickly be done, you need to actually have this type of mindset mm. like how they did with the waste management um this is very different from coronavirus but like i was quite surprised how people all of a sudden started you know recycling and it was so many uh <laughs> regulations about it and I don't know. I was pretty impressed. Right. How For people quickly, who don't understand, like you're talking month, about China. Yeah. China and their waste management system. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because it started like in one day we started to receive that will happen. And there was like people educating you, giving information. And it was like in compound people coming and teaching how to manage your waste. And if you don't do it, you get fined. So it was like pretty, like all the trash bins changed. Everything happened in the month. And you see that makes difference in some situations that right. people take and some, seriously. And something I want to add to what you're saying is I think a huge reason as to why that worked is because they actually have um, like elderly people out there volunteering their time to inform you. And there's, there's um, a culture of respecting your elders in China, which I think yeah. is a big reason as to why that can work. And I was talking to a friend and there's a culture in America where you don't necessarily respect your elders nearly as much as what they do in China. So I think mm. that foundation is an underlying reason as to why China is able to, you know, mm. get a grip on things and, you know, have a very structured way of handling the situation while in America, we're not necessarily taking it as seriously. Cause it's just kind of more of a different culture. But I think it's in a way it's either elderly or like whoever it's about like not being selfish. I see this being selfish and a little arrogant, maybe attitude towards all in Western countries in mm. a way. I mean, I'm, I'm not judging. It's just like an observation. Um, I think Turkey is also somehow a little bit much closer to China on mm -hmm. this side, being a little bit more traditional and respecting the elderly. But, well, in this type of situation, if elderly people do this volunteering thing, it wouldn't work in Turkey that much. Mm. Um, I, I don't know really why, but I can see and feel, you know, in my mind that would never work. Mm. Um, so I don't think that's only this, but the respecting stuff is pretty, um, true. Um, but I think government taking it serious and, you know, if you do something bad, you get fined. Maybe this sounds pretty cruel, like cruel or bad. I don't know, but 
like that is sometimes necessary. No, I totally get what you're saying. It's somewhat like black and white and it's, um, it makes things more clear at least. Yeah. And, um, in this situation, I think they took it really like the response was at the beginning, we know the doctor's story. That's not nice at all. Mm. Um, but it's very expected of (laughs) China in a way, but then they understood and they did like really good uh the fight they put against corona it was like i think like blowing my mind it's really good in a way um and i hear in our media saying that china was doing a bit too much (laughs) and i was like Mm. what that is the only way you can really fight and do a difference you know make a difference otherwise if you don't take it that serious it's like it's even worse now so many countries than china the Mm. reason china could stop it uh and control it it's because they took it really serious and they did real strict like policy Mm. um what do you think in turkey people still yeah go ahead go ahead in turkey Uh, (laughs) yeah in turkey people i see many people don't really take it serious even if you do you are not so sure if you should like it's people still suspicious like what is corona it's like and you know one time i told you this there are uh different type of people Mm. uh, and this reflect on so many situations uh on turkey like in the government selections uh, and here again like there is a group of people that who is a little bit more um, keeping up with the like modern life and like uh, I don't know may- maybe more open minded, and there are other people a little bit too god dependent, mm. and like there is a saying like if God will give this disease to me, He will eventually anyway. So, <laughs> um, so these people acting quite reckless because mm. if you think that way then you don't do like you don't do anything because it's like if it is the time that i need to die i will die anyway this virus is only a um a a, a name a reason like it's Mm. not a real thing i don't know if i am clear about this mindset Uh, you're you're um, very clear I, i understand what you're saying um there's an interesting you know i guess ideology, like a a debate to be had about respecting people's religious point of views. Um, in one sense, every individual should have the right, in my opinion, every individual should have the right to believe whatever they want. But when it comes to you potentially affecting other people, like the, these religious people may not understand that they're passing the virus on to someone else. So it's, um, it's a very delicate situation into how you would handle it in terms of informing people religious reasons you know yeah and i'm not even talking about like religion or why they believe or how they believe it Mm. it's not my business and i would never say anything towards like anyone and i wouldn't let anyone say anything about my thoughts or beliefs Mm. but um again like what you said if this affecting other people other lives then you can at least um think a little differently because you in a way you are like becoming a walking killer or murderer (laughs) you might not have uh you might not show any you know symptoms you might uh, not even feel that you have the virus but then you can pass uh, this disease to so many people you know there are people called super spreaders or something like Mm. that um, these people don't have any symptoms, don't show any symptoms. In like how it happened in South Korea, it's the 31st uh, person who had the virus. She was the super spreader. Mm. And then she actually uh, is the reason why the, um, the how do you say this, um, the number jump to thousands or something. Mm. It's like thirty to thousand, like incredibly. <laughs> uh, 
a bad situation. Hmm. Um, so, and in a way, the the real religious side of looking at these things, uh, we have a saying because the religion is so much in the culture. You know these things, even though you know you might not the biggest believer or uh, it's not about the God or the being Muslim. It's more about like the cultural stuff. So uh, the saying is like how to translate. Let's see. <laughs> Could you say it in Turkish uh, first you... and then say it in English? <laughs> sure. Eşeğini sağlam kızı bağla sonra Allah'a emanet et. So this means you tie <laughs> you tidying up your donkey. <laughs> A donkey? <laughs> A donkey. <laughs> the animal. Yeah, my donkey. Of course, I have a donkey. Yeah, a donkey. Mm. Yeah, sure. Mm. <laughs> so you, because I think this coming from a very old times when people <laughs> have the horses and donkeys, right? So the saying is about you tie up your donkey to a um, a good good stick, like a um, strong stick. Mm-hmm. Then you say, the "God, please keep him or her safe." Mm. So that means you have to do everything you can do, then pray God to protect you. Mm. So right. first of all, there are things you need to do. Like you can't just go walk to the street and don't expect any car to, um, you know, hit on hit hit you. Or it's just you are still waiting for that red light, you know, to show up, and then you waiting for your own. Uh, green light so there is this thing that you just don't go uh, out or walk and you don't say that uh, if god's not gonna kill me i will be fine like we don't act like that in daily life so mm. this kind of um reminds uh, me we talked about this a yeah. while ago stoism i believe it's like an ideology of how you'd live oh, yeah it sounds very similar to that <laughs> where um to my understanding <laughs> stoism is like you know nothing matters but that doesn't mean that you shouldn't just start try and live the best life you can. Like it's kind of like, don't be happy. Don't be sad about whatever happens, but kind of mm. just keep moving and keep going. I think, yeah, there is a, like, it's a kind of an acceptance. Mm. So you accept things a little bit easier uh, because of this type of belief. And this also kind of helpful in some situation that you can't answer, you know, you don't know why this happened like when people who die that you really love you don't know and you don't know where we're going after death and so many questions and this kind of helps people to keep their mind a little bit maybe in uh, peace Hmm. because you think uh, things happen for a reason um, and that was the time they those people need to go and you know pass away Hmm. Well, very insightful stuff. Thank you so much for your time. We're coming up on 20 minutes, so <laughs> kind of want to start to wrap it up. Yeah. And um, as we do, yep. my final question with my guests will be, what do you think the future holds? Um, any thoughts or opinions um, on where we're going with this? Yeah, um, it certainly affected my life dramatically, um, what happened, and the the only thing that I am trying to do right now, like my perspective right now is trying to adapt uh, because I realize we have so many things that we keep planning um, and all these things becoming so funny when these things happen. Like you realize you literally have no power on mm. things. And if you keep like fighting in your mind, like why did it happen? What am I going to do? Like, that's like so negative energy and that's certainly not going to help. And, you know, I'm paying rent for my house in Shanghai. I am in Turkey. I don't know when I'm going to go back. I have just founded my company and no one is talking about business or all the businesses are having a very tough time. Mm. So it's just like, maybe we all need to question like the things that we think we have to have or, you know, these are the rules actually we create in our minds and we limit ourselves in a way. Hmm. And 
I read so many articles. Um, that was kind of my hope, but I don't think it will happen. But if we realize the system that we uh, repeating for many years is actually not a must, and this could be an opportunity to see and change um, the economical structures, the way we work, the way we live, everything can change. Mm, yeah, it could and, be an opportunity to, you know, really rewrite yeah. how everything is done in a sense. Yeah, yeah, that would be really good. Um, but <laughs> not being negative, but somehow it's really hard to believe. But you never know. This could be an opportunity for these kind of things because, you know, for for once, all of the people on earth are in this together. Mm. Like, it's the same ship for once. It's not like a country, a city, or a part of the world is related or experiencing. All of us experiencing. So that's also how I keep my mind in um, a little bit in peace because I don't feel alone. Mm. Like it's not only me going through this tough time. Uh, it's so many people going through tough times and understanding each other. Um, so that's why I kind of think if something will change, this will help. Mm. This might create um, a good starting point. Awesome. Very insightful. Fulden, thank you so much for your time. <laughs> thank you. All right. Bye. Stay safe. Stay home. You too. Take care. <laughs> bye. <laughs> Boom. That's it. Thank you so much for listening. If you found this podcast valuable, there are many ways you can support it. You can rate and review it on iTunes, Stitcher, or wherever you listen. You can share it with your friends, you can blog about it, or discuss it on your own podcast. If you are watching on YouTube, you can subscribe to my channel and like this video or you can support it directly. You can do this by going to the shop on my website. I'll leave a link in the description. Thank you for supporting the show. Listeners like you make it possible. Again, if you are looking for information on how to protect yourself and stay safe from COVID-19, please get information from the CDC or the World Health Organization. Also, if you enjoyed the intro and outro music, it was made by my brother, Danny Greenberg. You can go and check out his beats on Apple Music, Spotify, YouTube, or SoundCloud. He goes by the name Estoric, E-S-T-O-R-I-C. All right, that's it for now.